In order to get any sound at all out of band in a box, uh, you need to make sure that you have your MIDI drivers configured properly. And uh, this is uh, uh, handled through this menu item. Options MIDI driver setup. It's important that you have the correct driver selected or you will hear nothing or you will hear the completely wrong information. On this uh, dialog you'll see three distinct columns. The most important is the MIDI output driver. Band in a Box doesn't create the actual sounds itself. It tells your sound card or your external MIDI sound module what notes to play. So uh, it's important that you be hooked up to the correct driver. And a driver is something that's supplied by either Microsoft in the Windows package or the maker of your sound card or uh, MIDI uh, module that's connected. So in this situation on my computer, you can see the MIDI output driver currently selected is the Roland MPU 401. On here, I have the first option is no MIDI sound output. That would be an unusual one to select. Uh, that would be you, if you wanted no output at all. The second one is the MIDI mapper. This is uh, uh, not a particular uh, module or anything. This is something that is supplied with the Windows system. And if you send something to the MIDI mapper, then you can configure the MIDI mapper itself to send it, relay it on to another driver. On this unit, I have a Sound Blaster AWE32 card installed in the computer, and uh, it is a synthesizer built into the sound card. There's also a much lower quality synthesizer built into the Sound Blaster AWE32 card that's also present on the Sound Blaster 16, and these are usually referred to as FM synthesizer drivers, and this is telling you that it's using the OPL3 chip, and it's at port 220. And this one has various names, uh, Super Sappy Driver, Creative Labs Driver, Sound Blaster FM Synthesizer. And uh, so chances are if you have a Sound Blaster 16 card and you want to use your internal sounds, you should be using this driver if you can find the name for it uh, in the list. Uh, there's a helpful button for you here, Get Output Driver Info. So let's see what it tells us about this Creative Labs uh, OPL driver. It tells you it's an FM internal synth driver for your sound card. It tells you information about it like the name uh, and the manufacturer, etc., and the polyphony. And uh, the Roland MPU-401 driver is a driver to a MPU-401 interface. In this computer we have an MPU-401 card installed and then that's in turn going to a sound canvas and a Roland sound canvas and that's what you're hearing. If you get the input the output info on this one you'll see that it's a MIDI output driver. These That means it re requires a MIDI interface and an external sound module. It's not one of these built-in uh, sound card uh, uh, drivers. Uh, similarly, the S Sound Blaster Aw32 here is a MIDI synthesizer sound card driver. So it's important that you first decide: Am I somebody with a sound card that has a, uh, is expecting an internal uh, synthesizer to operate, or do I have a MIDI interface and an external synthesizer? That's the first thing to decide, and then you'll be able to choose which driver to install. If your driver that you're expecting to be on this list does not appear on this list, it means one of two things. Either you have not installed the driver, uh, in which case you'll need to go into the control panel and install it, which will be shown to you how to do this on this videotape, or it means that you yes, you have installed the driver uh, correctly into the control panel, but when Windows booted up, Windows was unable to initialize this driver. Uh, causes of that could be uh, something like a conflict with another uh, device or if it, the interface required uh, electrical power and it wasn't plugged in, uh, something along these lines. But if you find that you've installed a driver into the control panel and it doesn't appear on this list, you'll know that the cause is the driver has failed to initialize and it's something that's unrelated to ban in a box. So. If, just make sure that your driver is on this list. So we're going to select the Roland MPU 401 as the output driver. The input driver, if you're not planning on uh, uh, connecting a 
keyboard to a band in a box and recording in melodies. If you're not planning on doing that, then there's really no need for an input driver and you can uh, select no MIDI sound input. In this tape, we are connecting a driver uh, because we are planning on uh, recording melodies, so we've selected the Roland MPU 401 interface. Certainly, if you just have a Sound Blaster card and you don't have a keyboard, there's no point in uh, trying to connect a, a MIDI driver. Synthesizer sound card setting, uh, uh, you can look for your exact uh, module on this list. If you don't find it, uh, the, remember that <clears throat> most model, models these days are general MIDI compatible, so just choose general MIDI instrument miscellaneous. Uh, the general MIDI standard was formed in 1991, and what that did is standardize the patch names and numbers so that uh, acoustic bass is patch 33, and this is something agreed upon by all of the manufacturers that make the general MIDI modules. This was a big breakthrough in um, you know, uh, computer uh, programs using them with the synthesizers. So hopefully the model you're using is general MIDI compatible. If it isn't general MIDI compatible, for example, if it's the uh, Kurzweil K1200, then hopefully we've made a patch map for it like we've done with the Kurzweil K1200. In this case, uh, the uh, uh, if we just leave this dialog box for a minute, if you can um, see this menu item called make a patch map and uh, in the make a patch map you can specify which patch you would like to be sent out now in the general MIDI standard everything here is sequential acoustic piano is one bright piano is two but if you have a, a non-general MIDI compatible synthesizer like a, an older Korg keyboard or a Kurzweil you can just type in whatever number you would like to be sent out for acoustic piano and it will be sent out and you fill them in for all of your instruments then you can save that uh, using this uh, command to save a, um, a drum patch uh, file and then you can load that in as your customized kit but uh, hopefully we've uh, uh, you've either got a general MIDI keyboard or you have uh, a synthesizer that's one of the uh, ones listed. Uh, we also, with the um, models here, we accompanying the DK file we have a doc file which is a simple uh, text file and if you press the get um, patch kit info this will launch a notepad in Windows and uh, you can see that it will include this doc file so make sure you have a look on the uh, on your hard drive in case you don't want to load it in from there and just read the information that we've supplied about um, you know installing it of, and this will cover certain things like uh, you know what buttons to press on your synthesizer to get uh, get things working when you press OK you'll get a message saying is it OK to load the patch kit file which will just load in the file which lists the patches that will be mapped for your particular synthesizer as well as the drum kit notes.